Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And while you're there, you might want to check out this link to the uh, information about our uh, Southwest Utah Premium Astrophotography Masterclass. That's going to be happening this fall, in late September, early October, in uh, St. George, Utah. And we'll be exploring primarily post-processing uh, using my techniques of blending PixInsight and Photoshop. Uh, we'll also have opportunities to go out and do some night sky photography uh, and we'll be using remote telescopes uh, to collect data to work on in the class. So if you're interested be sure to check that out and for today what I want to do is just a, a little quick overview of how I blend narrowband data with RGB broadband data and we're going to be doing that in Photoshop. So before we start in Photoshop let's take a look at how we got here in PixInsight. So in PixInsight, I processed this data of the Trifid Nebula, and I don't have a lot of data here, so it's not the greatest image in the world. But it went through kind of my usual processing with uh, uh, gradient correction and uh, blur exterminator, noise exterminator, star exterminator, and so forth. And that left us with three files. We've got the main RGB. This was captured with a color camera. Uh, so it's just a simple color image and then we have the stars that Star Exterminator extracted from that color image and then we have a starless version from the L Enhance filter from the same camera. So we have L Enhance which is dual narrowband, RGB stars and the RGB layer. So we load all of that into Photoshop and you'll see in Photoshop if you look at my layers palette over here and let me show you a larger version of that so you can see it a little easier I have dropped those individual layers into layer groups so I did the usual <coughs> load files uh, load layers so that each file comes in as an individual layer and then I've organized those into layer groups and done the optimization for each layer uh, within that layer group. So at the bottom, kind of the, the basis or the foundation of the image, if you want to think of it that way, I have the L Enhance image. And then on top of that is the RGB data. And then on top of that is global adjustments. And if you recall the way uh, Photoshop and probably most photo editing software works, when you have layers, the layers on top take precedence over what's below. So if this layer is just opaque, it blocks anything that's below it. If you use a mask, you can selectively reveal what's below. And then you can also use different blending modes that allow different interactions between the layers. And we'll be talking more about that as we get into the layers. This next layer, this color fill, that's a very dark layer. It's set to an RGB values of 19, 19, 19. And that's there just as a, uh, I guess you would call it a floor. That doesn't allow anything in the image to be any darker than that 19, 19, 19. And what happens, especially when you have not a lot of data, some of the dark areas just turn into splotchy noise. And by selectively or carefully darkening those below that 19, 19, uh, solid fill layer that just kind of converts that dark splotchy noise into a nice smooth dark background and then lastly on top we have the stars so let's look in a little more detail at how these work if I alt click on the layer group so for instance if I alt click on the eyeball for the L enhance data that will turn off everything except that layer group so by itself this is what the L Enhance data looks like. And you can see it's got a little bit of blue, uh, kind of the, the color of oxygen three. There's a lot of hydrogen alpha here in the core. 
and then we also have some hydrogen alpha clouds surrounding the trifid that the uh, L-Enhance filter picked up. If we look at the RGB data, you can see it doesn't have near as much of the uh, HA signal. It's got still the bright red core, uh, but it has more of this dust, which is actually a reflection nebula. It's uh, starlight being reflected off of dust rather than uh, O3. That's why it doesn't show up very much in the O3 data. And it picks up very little of the surrounding hydrogen alpha. And then, of course, the stars are just the stars. Uh, the blending modes are what makes this work. <clears throat> this bottom layer, if we look at the blending mode for the bottom layer, you'll see that it's just in pass-through mode. Pass-through is the default for a layer group. It's the equivalent of normal blending mode for an individual layer. So it's just our foundation at the bottom of the image. The RGB image, it has detail. And if you think about this image versus the L-Enhance, the L-Enhance has a lot of detail out here in this surrounding field behind the, the trifid. If we look at the RGB, it's mostly just dark out here. So the RGB image is darker out here than the L-Enhance data. There are also some areas in the core where it's a little bit brighter in the RGB data. And mostly all of this blue from the uh, dust cloud is brighter than what's below it on this L-Enhance. So what that tells us is we want to add this RGB data to the L-Enhance data, but mostly where it's brighter than the L-Enhance. And fortunately, there's a blending mode that does that. If we look at the RGB layer group, you can see it's in lighten blending mode. What lighten blending mode does is it will only show what's on this RGB group if it's lighter than what's below it. And you can see if I turn this off and on, what it's really doing is adding lightness in some areas but it's not affecting, for instance, any place where it's darker than what's below. So, for instance, the, this dark background area in the RGB data is not affecting the red, even though it's dark, it's a little bit brighter than that RGB data. So it's only affecting the areas where RGB is lighter than what's below. And then this third layer group is just some global adjustments that uh, refine this image overall. And then I mentioned this is the 19-19-19 uh, solid color fill layer. <clears throat> Usually you don't want to see much of an impact of this at all. If I turn this layer on and off, uh, you see very little of any areas where it actually has an impact. And that's what you want it to do. Is you don't want it to have a big impact. Uh, you just want it to be there uh, kind of as a safety. And then lastly, the stars. And the stars are removed in PixInsight using the unscreen process in Star Exterminator. So we use the screen blending mode to put those back in. And again, they affect only the stars. Everything else on that layer is black. And it doesn't have any effect in screen blending mode. So kind of a quick uh, overview of this process, but this is a way of combining RGB and narrowband, or in this case dual narrowband data, to create an, an, an RGB plus narrowband image that uses the, the best of both sets of data. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear dark sky. Thanks.